Hello friends, today we will discuss ultrasound guided popliteal shatic nerve block. This is my introduction. There are different techniques to block shatic nerve according to anatomical position. Number one is parasacral shatic nerve block approach. The second is transgluteal shatic nerve block in which we go through the gluteal maximus muscle. The third technique is subgluteal or gluteal crease shatic nerve block. And the fourth is popliteal shatic nerve block. The fifth is anterior shatic nerve block. Shatic nerve is subcutaneous and is easy to block at two levels. Number one, in gluteal crease, before it passes under long head of biceps, femoral muscle, subgluteal approach. The second is near popliteal fossa. After it emerges from long head of biceps, femoral muscle, moving towards popliteal fossa. In this presentation, we will discuss ultrasound guided popliteal shatic nerve block. Covered in this presentation are relevant anatomy of shatic nerve, preoperative assessment and preparation, indication and contraindication of shatic nerve block, complication and side effect of shatic nerve block, prerequisite of shatic nerve block, equipment and logistic required, ultrasound setting, making position for shatic nerve block. Conduct of popliteal shatic nerve block, intraoperative care, postoperative care, and clinical tips. Relevant anatomy of the shatic nerve. Overview of shatic nerve and its branches. Nerve arises from lumbosacral plexus in the pelvis, from ventral rami of lumbar 4, lumbar 5, sacral 1, sacral 2, and sacral 3, nerve root. In front of the piriformis muscle. Shatic nerve leaves pelvis through greater shatic forum. At lower border of polyformis muscle, it enters posterior thigh. It travels down in gluteal region between ischial tuberosity and greater trochanter under cover of gluteus maximus muscle. In its path downward, it is crossed by long head of biceps femoris muscle. Main trunk of shatic nerve consists of two components. Tibial component arises from ventral division of number 4, number 5, sacral 1, 2, and 3. The peroneal component arises from dorsal division of number 4, number 5, sacral 1, and 2. Sciatic nerve is the thickest and longest nerve of the body. It's about 1.5 cm to 2 cm wide. The division in terminal branches of tibial and common peroneal nerve takes place around 6.5 cm above popliteal crease. There is wide variation in its uh, division that is around 5 cm to 18 cm above the popliteal crease. Tibial nerve is the largest branch and continuing vertically downward, while common peroneal nerve moves laterally and winds around head of the fibula. This is a diagram showing root value of sciatic nerve and its terminal branches, tibial nerve and common peroneal. Tibial nerve in green drives from L45, S12 and 3 while the common peroneal nerve are the dorsal division of lumbar 4, lumbar 5, sacral 1 and sacral 2. Both the nerves are derived from ventral rami. Ventral division and dorsal division makes the tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve. This is a diagram showing formation of the sciatic nerve in the pelvis. We can see five nerve root emerging from the neural foramina in front of the piriformis muscle and entering in the posterior thigh. This is a diagram showing the sciatic nerve in full view. It emerges under the cover of piriformis muscle and moves in posterior thigh. In the gluteal region, it is covered by gluteus maximus and below in whole its length, it is only crossed by long head of biceps femoris muscle. This is a diagram in which there is classification given by Beaton and Enson for the anatomical relationship between sciatic nerve and the piriformis muscle. The highest incidence is 87%. It comes in the thigh from the lower border of the piriformis muscle. In 13% cases, one component comes below the piriformis muscle and the common peroneal comes from the center of the muscle, which is 13%. And in 1% type 3, the tibial comes under the piriformis muscle and the common peroneal comes above the piriformis muscle. In uh, fourth type, the whole the sciatic nerve coming from the center of the piriformis muscle. And the fifth type, the common peroneal comes above the piriformis muscle and the tibial nerve comes 
from the center of the piriformis muscle in type 6 the whole sciatic nerve comes from above the piriformis muscle many times the anatomical variation is the non discal causes of the sciatica because the muscle contraction irritates the nerve and causes sciatica the deep relations of the sciatic nerve the deep relations of the sciatic nerve from above downwards are at exit it is related to body of ischium bone superior gemellus inferior gemellus muscle obturator internus then quadrator femoris muscle then in its length adductor magnus muscle the superficial relation of sciatic nerve from above downward are piriformis muscle covered by gluteus maximus muscle and in the thigh it is only crossed by the biceps femoris muscle long head sciatic nerve accompanied by superior inferior gluteal artery and nerve superior gluteal artery and nerve are above the piriformis muscle and inferior gluteal artery and nerve comes out from below the piriformis muscle posterior femoral gluteus nerve also accompanies the sciatic nerve pudendal nerve internal pudendal artery and vein all so company the sciatic nerve this is a diagram showing deep relationship of sciatic nerve from about it comes out from the piriformis muscle then there is a superior gemellus obturator internus muscle inferior gemellus muscle quadriceps femoris muscle and in its length adductor magnus muscle long head of biceps can also be seen in this diagram of the sciatic nerve the articular branches arise from the gluteal region to hip joint muscular branches from the tibial component innervate semitendinosus muscle semi membranosus muscle long head of biceps femoris adductor magnus ischial part short head of biceps supplied by the common peroneal nerve cutaneous branches all leg and foot except area supplied by the saphenous nerve this is a diagram showing muscular innervation of posterior thigh and leg by tibial and common peroneal nerve in green the tibial nerve supplies biceps femoris long head semi tendinosus adductor magnus semi membranous muscle and in the leg it supplies gastrocnemius flexor digitorum profundus adductor hallucis flexor digitorum brevis flexor hallucis brevis and lumbricals common peroneal nerve supplies biceps femoris short head only in the thigh and in the leg it supplies tibialis anterior extensor digitorum brevis extensor hallucis longus extensor digitorum longus fibulus longus and fibularis brevis muscle this is a diagram showing cutaneous branches of the sciatic nerve sciatic nerve has no cutaneous branch for thigh it innervates the skin through tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve Preoperative assessment and preparation are done as routine. We take detailed history to general physical examination. We request for lab investigation. We do risk assessment and ASA grading of the patient. We optimize comorbidities and prepare patient for procedure. We take written consent from the patient. Confirm NPO and side marking is done in the holding area in the morning. Indication and contraindication of sciatic nerve block are if this block is a uh, a distal block which in combination with saphenous nerve block will provide anesthesia and analgesia for posterior knee calf ankle and foot surgery that is below knee surgical procedure which can be performed under sciatic nerve block or anesthesia and analgesia for posterior knee surgery calf and achilles tendon repairs analgesia for calf tourniquet ankle surgery foot surgery vascular surgery lower limb angiography usually the saphenous nerve is blocked in combination with sciatic nerve to provide analgesia below knee surgery contraindication are same as all regional anesthesia technique like patient refusal inflammation or infection over the injection site allergy to local anesthetic drug relative include anticoagulation or bleeding disorders pre existing peripheral neuropathy where sensory block may mass compartments and Complications of sciatic nerve block include block failure, which can occur with any region block, hemorrhage, infection, which needs a sterile technique, allergy to local anesthetic drug, intraneural injection, and nerve damage can occur. Intravascular injection can occur, and there could be local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Requisite of sciatic nerve block: block executed in an area designated for region block. All facilities for general anesthesia must be available in this area. Sterile technique is necessary. We need bright light source. We need 18 gauge working IV access. We need all standard monitor to be attached. All resuscitation drug must be in hand including lipid solution. We need trained assistant for ultrasound guided regional anesthesia. Equipment required. 
ultrasound machine with a high frequency linear array transducer vinyl ultrasound gel sterile 22 gauge insulated blend bevel ecogenic little 80 to 100 millimeter long pressure mirroring syringe with tubing we need a sterile gloves a sterile towel to isolate the block area we need a sterile cleansing solution we use puncture site analgesia for this we need 3 ml of local anesthetic drug a safe dose should be calculated based on body weight of the patient usual volume required for the block is 20 ml may be increased to 25 30 ml but a safe dose should not exceed we need sedative analgesic drugs like uh, mirazolam, fentanyl, and ketamine. So we need facilities to convert patient to general anesthesia. Ultrasound setting. We need adjustment in gain, focus, depth before the procedure. So anatomy done before the block to know the anatomy. We put ultrasound machine on control lateral side in front of our eyes. Color Doppler can be used to avoid intravascular injection. Identify orientation of needle with probe. We need to support probe hand and the needle hand. We keep the angle of needle with probe at 180 degree, which is very beneficial in this block. We use part to obtain best view. See the next slide. Depth setting will be 4 to 6 cm and 70 kg per cent. This is a diagram showing part maneuvering in which we apply pressure, alignment, rotation and tilt to have best view and especially in this block we do anisotropy which helps to get the best view. Making position for sciatic nerve block. The block may be performed in a prone lateral or supine position. Prone position is my favorite position because in this position the probe hand is stabilized and needle hand is stabilized and the patient is stable and not moving the leg. Particular care should be taken to ensure the correct side is blocked once the patient stands prone. Supine position can be managed in this knee is flexed or alternatively straight with a support under the lower leg and ankle to suspend it high enough to accommodate the ultrasound probe. Lateral position is also practiced. The operative side is kept uppermost in lateral position and we put a ultrasound machine in front of the patient. While standing behind the patient, this ensures a good position for operator to view the screen and perform block comfortably. This is a diagram showing prone position in which the hand is easily stabilized and needle hand is very easily stabilized. This is a diagram showing supine position. This is a diagram showing lateral position. Conduct of the popliteal sciatic nerve block. Sign in and site markings done in preoperative holding area. We make appropriate position of the patient for the block. We do sononatomy before preparing and wrapping the block area. We use a sterile preparation of the area and isolate area with towels. We use puncture side analgesia. We identify orientation of probe sides, apply gel on probe. We put linear ultrasound probe on popliteal crease transversely. We use pendulum movement up and down to identify the tibial nerve, common perineal nerve, sciatic nerve, and popliteal vessels. We first locate pulsating and echoic popliteal artery and vein by selecting pressure on the probe. Femoral vein is easily compressible. Tibial nerve is superficial to vein and artery. Common perineal lies lateral. We can see synomen sign. We use anisotropy, means tilting the probe towards foot. That will help. This is a diagram showing the anisotropy maneuvering. Both nerves are anisotropic, so tilting will improve realization. We optimize image, adjust depth and gain and frequency setting. Scan upward to identify where the common peroneal and tibial nerve converge to form sciatic nerve. It is convenient to block the sciatic nerve with a single injection. Blocking common peroneal and tibial nerve separately may decrease onset time by 30%. An in-plane approach should be used. Alternatively, out-of-plane technique can be used. Needle is inserted from lateral aspect of thigh 180 degree to the probe. This allows the entire length of the needle to be visible. Use 1 to 2 ml of local anesthetic to confirm correct injection site. 
injected at a volume of 20 ml of local anesthetic around the sciatic nerve in 5 ml helicots. Every helicot should be followed by aspiration. A spread of local anesthetic be visualized at all times. If a spread of local anesthetic is not clearly seen, consider intravascular injection. Replacement of needle is required. This is a diagram showing the popliteal fossa and the relationship of sciatic nerve, femoral vein and femoral artery. This is a diagram showing we can say synomen sign, clearly visible bicep femoral muscle from the lateral side and semi tendinosus muscle and semi membranous muscle from the medial side and the important thing at this area the sciatic nerve is subcutaneous and very near to the skin. Below this we find the popliteal vein and in the last we find popliteal artery. This anatomical position is variable when we move the probe up and down. This is a diagram showing sononatomy of the block. We can clearly see common peroneal nerve and tibial nerve. Below this popliteal vein which is bigger and the popliteal artery which is pulsatile. The vein is only visible when we decrease the pressure on the probe. The most important thing in this area, the nerve is subcutaneous. Intraoperative care. We brief all details of the block to the patient before starting procedure. We apply full standard monitoring as for general anesthesia throughout procedure. We avoid hypothermia and use full body bear hugger. We test motor and sensory block before tunicate and incision. We isolate limb by full screen. Pseudoanalgesia can be given but better after confirmation of the block. Pseudoanalgesia can mark signs of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. We monitor for local anesthetic systemic toxicity and we keep in hand lipid emulsion in OR and recovery. Alternatively, you maintain close verbal communication with patient. In case of inadequate block, get ready to convert patient to general anesthesia. Postoperative care. After completing procedure, we gently shift the patient to post anesthesia care unit where we again apply all the monitors and again monitor the patient for local anesthetic systemic toxicity. We inform patient about approximate time of return of sensation so the patient should not feel handicapped. We prescribe analgesia IV or oral in advance when block wears off. Early mobility is possible with this block. Early resumption of food and drink is allowed. Early pain-free physiotherapy can be done. We exchange cell phone contact to assist in case of problem. We document about the site of the sciatic nerve block. We have five sites where sciatic nerve can be blocked. Which position out of three position, supine, prone and lateral, we have to document. We use in plane or out of plane that should be documented. And did we use local anesthetic for puncture site analgesia? We also document needle size and type, total volume used, concentration used, name of the local anesthetic, ease or difficulty of injection, pain on injection and negative aspiration after each 5 ml. Clinical tips. The operator stands on same side and ultrasound machine on opposite side of the patient. A squeezing of the cough muscle can help to augment venous flow. Sciatic nerve is thickest nerve, so onset time can take up to 30 to 45 minutes and the patient may not demonstrate a profound motor block. Always give support to the probe hand and the needle hand. We confirm orientation of needle with the ultrasound probe. Only advanced needle when full needle is visible with pebble cut. We use hydrodissection to reach sciatic nerve. Color Doppler can be used to identify and avoid intravascular induction we avoid intravascular injection by aspiration each time we inject and we see clearly the fluid coming out of the needle on the screen. We avoid internal injection by pain on injection. If there is pain on injection, we should stop. Second injection operation if it's more than 15 psi which is clearly visible on the pressure gauge on the syringe. Third is direct vision of fluid on the screen is visible when we inject. Fourth is use of nerve stimulator as lowest current 0.1 mA which is only possible when the needle tip is inside the nerve. It will give twitch. Thank you.